The Last of Us 2. Let's talk about it. I know I'm late. I know there's been a thousand reviews on the internet about this game. I know you've seen all the videos of how terrible it is and why you should boycott it and never play it. Dad! Oh no, fuck this. Fuck Dad! this. I don't give a fuck. But I've had some time to think about it. Really, really think about it. Because if you didn't know, I am a fiction writer and every piece of media I consume, whether it be movies, games, or books, I try to learn something from. I try to analyze it, not while I'm playing it or watching it. So don't think I'm being overly analytical as I'm going through this. Generally, when I take note of something, it jumps out at me. It's not that I'm looking for it, but that it's just off. And then what I do is I just try to think about why I didn't like it or why it bothered me. So I think there's no way to talk about this game without spoilers. So you have been warned, there will be spoilers ahead. All right, first I think we should get the good stuff out of the way. If you've ever played a Naughty Dog game, you'll know that they are masters of their craft. Every element of the game, they strive for perfection. Now, if they ever reach that, is up for debate, but no one can discount the achievements they made from a graphic standpoint, animation standpoint, the actors are all doing a great job and really bringing the characters to life. Every game is a major leap in fidelity. And for the most part, their stories are great. They don't take a lot of chances, but they do sometimes delve into territory that may be somewhat unfamiliar to a lot of players outside of something like a movie or a book. So this game, plays well, the animation's amazing, the visuals are great. They really brought the characters to life in a way I haven't seen before. The facial expressions, the eyes almost are out of that uncanny valley zone. The sound design, the music, Gustavo, you, you killed it again. I, I love the solo guitar work. It really speaks to the setting and the characters and what they're going through. And as I said before, all of the actors, amazing work. I can tell that you guys really just embodied these characters and your performances. And the gameplay, it's fun, it's interesting, it's not super complex. You have a somewhat expanded crafting system, which is decent. My favorite thing, though, is the dynamic animations when you're in close combat. I don't think I've played a game that's been more satisfying in that regard. It's just when you... <laughs> When you hit a guy with a sledgehammer, it's just, I, I don't know how to explain it. The camera's there with you. You feel like you are the character even though we're in a third person game. It's just a jarring experience. It's a very chaotic experience and, and I had a blast every time I got into close combat. So what's next? I suppose we should get into the story. But first, before that, let's talk about character because there is the adage I'm sure you're all familiar with, character is king. And that is arguably the most important thing in storytelling. And I agree wholeheartedly. For me, character will trump plot any day. Now you do have storylines where they're more plot driven, something like let's say James Bond or the Jack Reacher series, where there's really not any arcs going on at all uh, with the character. It's kind of the same character over and over and over again. They don't really change much. I think of the James Bond movies that maybe in the recent ones, they've tried to break that pattern a little bit. But The Last of Us is a very character-driven game. That's why we love it so much. Because of two people, Joel and Ellie. Now, what made them so unique? Why did we care about them? Well, you may or may not know, but when you're doing a character arc, it's important to know that the character doesn't always get what they want, they get what they need. And that's exactly what happened to Joel and Ellie. You have Joel who lost his daughter and he's just broken up about the whole thing. He's bitter, he, has, he seemingly has no emotion. And he is tasked with taking this girl Ellie because she has a possible cure for this outbreak. So at the very beginning, they're at each other's throats. You have Joel who is only reminded of his daughter every time he sees Ellie. And then Ellie just is independent. She doesn't want to be told what to do. She's always at odds with Joel in that regard. And throughout the game, that is amplified 
and then brought back down depending on the storyline and you can see it like them chipping away at it slowly over time and just when you think they're 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 gaining some ground it goes back to where it began but at the end as we know we ultimately end up with them coming together Joel has this daughter figure whom he dooms the world for and Ellie has this father figure so speaking of dooming the world logically we should have hated Joel for what he did he he sacrificed a potential cure for all of humanity for this one girl but because the writers of the game really had us empathize with these characters and learn to love them throughout this crazy experience we forgave him for it and many of us probably would have made the same choice Joel did sorry for that little introduction I think we needed to understand where we began to understand why the hate is so heavy for this one. So let's talk about the characters in The Last of Us 2. We have Joel, he is the first character we see and he's recounting the events to Tommy of the previous game and, and kind of his just thoughts about the whole thing. And then of course Ellie's there, older, in some kind of a love triangle with, with this girl Dina and this guy named Jesse. And those really are the core main characters on Ellie's side. Now I'm going to stop there because Abby, everyone's favorite character, mirrors Ellie's story completely, almost exactly. And we learn why she's out for revenge. So I'm not going to really go into too much depth right now about Abby and the group of people she's with because you can closely put a one-to-one -one comparison between X person on Al Ellie's side and X person on Abby's side. And really the only arcs we have here are Ellie and Abby. And they're the same arc, exactly the same, which is that revenge doesn't pay and the closest things that you love can be taken away from you without any kind of meaning. So now that I've talked about the arcs, Let's move into the moment everyone has waited for. That is the gut punch, the death of Joel. Now this event is uh, very divisive to say the least. We have had people break their discs on camera, stop playing the game completely at that point because they're just so uh, riddled with, with emotions. <laughs> but that, really speaks to the work that Naughty Dog did in the sequel to make us care so much about a character that when we lose this person, we're devastated. And that is why, hold on, I'm gonna say something probably really controversial here, but I think Joel's death works. And I will tell you why. So one thing seemed apparent to me is that Naughty Dog wanted to get us as close as possible to these characters. We, they wanted to put us in the same headspace, right? This is a revenge story. Ellie goes out on a quest for revenge. And in that scene, you know what I'm talking about, Joel is on his stomach, bleeding out. Ellie's pinned down across the room. And Abby's approaching Joel. Ellie knows what's going to happen, and she's helpless to do anything. And then Joel dies. Ellie sees it all helpless and to make matters worse one of the guys spits on his corpse and it's just <laughs> it's like salt in the wound at that point so while it was sudden and while maybe Joel didn't get the death he deserved as a lot of people like to say it it put you in Ellie's head completely I mean I remember when I was playing this game right after that point I just I couldn't wait to murder everything, kill everything in my path, especially those damn dogs, and find Abby and end her. And that was it. Now, does that make me a sociopath? <laughs> that's the question. Maybe that's the question Naughty Dog is asking because they turn it on its head later on that is probably even more divisive. So while uh, Joel was one of my favorite characters of all time in a game, I think his death worked. I think it successfully 
got you into this narrative wholeheartedly and deeply and just very viscerally that those next 10 hours or so of gameplay were just satisfying and immersive and all of those things. All right, if I still have you, let's move on to the next part where it's kind of the, the event that the internet wasn't ready for. It's when at the midpoint of the game, you play as Abby, the woman who killed our beloved Joel. Dad! Oh no, fuck this. Now let's talk about midpoints for a second. Midpoints in a story are when something dramatic happens narratively. Um, a character has a revelation, the plot moves from, or the character I should say, maybe moves more to the proactive state than the reactive state. They're becoming who they need to be to finish their, their quest. Naughty Dog did something different here. They decided to make the midpoint a game mechanic and no one liked it. I hated it. It, it really killed me and I really would love to know the intention of the writers, Neil Druckmann, and I'm sorry I forget the woman's name who's also a screenwriter. Because one thing is clear is that they want us to empathize with Abby. So we're taken back in time, we're taken through flashbacks, we're taken through points in Abby's life before she's this roided out lady. And they're obviously trying to get us to care for her. So if you know, Ellie collects these comic cards, Abby collects these coins, which is, she had kind of a special relationship with her father regarding that. And then her father, of course, is the one who Joel kills, we find out pretty quickly, which gives her cause to do what she did, but we still don't see it. Maybe logically we can, but not emotionally. I don't give a fuck. And that's really what's important in any kind of story. I mean, Solstein, who is a famous editor and fiction writer, said that fiction's purpose is to evoke emotion. I don't think that Naughty Dog evoked the right emotion here. In no way, shape, or form do I think anyone can empathize with Abby unless they're somehow not emotionally connected to Joel and Ellie in any way. Or they don't have the capability to empathize like that with a fictional character. That's the only way I can see it happening. So what did this odd game mechanic midpoint do? It made the rest of the game a complete slog. Uh, I just kept looking on the internet like how many more hours do i have to play as abby before i get back to la that's all i cared about and i think that really points to a failing of the game design now if you're trying to make a point like you have this thematic idea that violence is wrong or you don't know this character until you've walked in their shoes i get it but i feel like it was a cheap move i don't think that it was successful in any way once again, I would love to know the intentions of the writers here because it's not really a narrative midpoint or it's a narrative shift, it's a game mechanic shift. So that would be a game design question, not necessarily a writing question, even though everyone was affected by this choice. All right, so we play as Abby. We meet all these characters, another pregnant lady, just like Dina, who Melly kills. We don't care, I know that's messed up, I don't advocate killing babies, but I'm telling you man, I was just so in the head of Ellie and feeling terrible for Joel that any kind of logic was out the window. Even the dogs who were these bastards who would sniff your trail early on are now these these companions like we all, we all know dogs to be and fun and fluffy and playful and you throw a ball and they fetch it. <laughs> I don't know what that was trying to achieve. Well, actually, I mean, I do know what I was trying to achieve. It's just that I'm really surprised the writers of at Naughty Dog, as clever as they are and as creative as, as they are, went this way and expected the players to follow and buy into it. So this brings us to the final chapter when Ellie is back in the player's hands. So we find Ellie, she has 
given up her quest for revenge to settle down with Dina. The baby's born. Everything seems great. And then here walks in Tommy. And Tommy brings the, the shadow of guilt onto Ellie. And it forces her to go and continue her quest for revenge. Even in the face of an ultimatum that Dina gives her, which is, if you leave now, you're coming back to nothing. So we follow LA to Santa Barbara, tracking Abby down. There's more factions. It doesn't matter. That's one thing I felt about this game. There was so much of a lot of stuff. They were really trying to develop the world and make it feel, just do a lot more world building. But it was interesting, but it really just shows how much world building doesn't really affect the way we feel about stories. It's always the characters. I mean, those are the ones we root for. Those are the ones we care about. Everything else is just, you know, like window dressing. Anyway, we find Abby on the beach, on this post, withering away, her head shaved, and Ellie lets her down. I get it, right? I mean, Ellie's exhausted emotionally, physically, just like we are at this point. And I think that's one of the successes that Naughty Dog had here, or one of the successes that Naughty Dog achieved here is that I felt so damn drained in this game. And I will give them credit for that. That is a, a great thing to do, is have somebody so invested in something that they're just like, Ugh. when will it end? So she decides to cut her down along with Lev. Another side note, Lev, I appreciate what they did with the diversity there. They did weave in the, the gender identification with the narrative. So great work on that. It didn't feel like just out of left field. But I just didn't care for the character. Ne neither of them, Lev or Yara, it just didn't work for me. And perhaps it was because the headspace I was in, hating Abby and anybody she was associated with, even those people she would help. Abby heads to the water. Ellie follows her there, barely able to make her way over the sand dune. And she's reminded once again before Abby leaves with a flashback of Joel dying on the floor of what she needs to do. And so we, we get to this hand-to-hand -hand combat between Abby and Ellie which resolves again with them going their separate ways. She sees an image of Joel in much better shape, and it reminds her that, you know, none of this is really worth it. And she loses her two fingers, which make it a problem for her to play the song Joel taught her early on while she's sitting by the window. I think it's a great moment. I think it, some people thought it was cheesy because it was too on the nose, but I thought it was a nice bookend to the whole thing because that's how their relationship was somewhat healed at the beginning is, is, her, is him teaching her that song. So she's in this empty house. Dina fulfilled her promise of uh, not being there and Ellie got the ending she deserved, which is she lost everything. And there's a beautiful camera pan up to the window after Ellie puts the guitar down and we see her walking off into the distance. So this game is a really mixed bag for me. There's things I love about it. There's moments, flashback with Joel and the Apollo launch that really reminded me of the capabilities of these writers and how they can sell a character and just kind of make all of our wall walls disappear and we're lost in the story. But then there is the aspect of forcing us to play a character we despise for half the game nearly, and it's treading familiar ground. We already know what happens. We know this point at which the two characters split. So there's really not a lot of stakes there. It's really just about us learning about Abby's history and, and trying to empathize with her because we know where this ends already. So I feel like that's a failing. I, I appreciate the effort there. Naughty Dog has done something truly unique in this game and I'll give them credit for. They've made me anyway feel closer to a character in any game I've ever played and as emotional as I've ever been in any game I've ever played. I'm gonna have to give this game a six out of 10. 
I think there's a lot of great stuff, as I've mentioned. There is just so much bad stuff that outweighs the enjoyment or, or catharsis of this story, because at its heart, this game and this series is a narrative. It's a They put so much emphasis on storytelling that the failing of that is really what brings everything down and it, it just makes you forget all of the good stuff for the most part so i'll leave you with this no matter how you feel about the game one of my favorite directors nick reffin once said something along the lines of if half the audience loves it and half the audience hates it you have created art so naughty dog i think you're pretty much in that camp i haven't checked out the metacritic score lately if you've made it this far, I hope you've enjoyed my take on it. It's not conventional. I try to approach it from more a storyteller's point of view, cutting out all of the intricacies or the redundancies in the plot because I don't really think those matter a whole lot with the, the global feeling of this game. If you would like to see me create some stuff rather than just critique other people's work, please check out my series Worth 1000 Words where I write a 1,000 word short story on the spot based on a piece of artwork I find on the internet. So I use it kind of like a writing prompt. And if you'd like to see more reviews from me, please comment below, like it, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.